<laughs> That's awful. <laughs> That's just messed up. When the subway slaps, hang in there and don't go chasing waterfalls. What? Today we are breaking down and reacting to um hairy medical scenes and random injuries from what I am told are the unluckiest people on the internet. All right, let's dive right in. We're doing a little parkour action. Good. Oh! Landed right on his testicles, penis, or what we call perineum. So you can have lacerations, you can have big hematomas or big blood clots that can form. And then obviously the pain that you're gonna feel into the abdomen, especially if you hit a testicle. Because the testicles descended from inside of our abdomen and made their way out, that is why you actually feel pain in your stomach or in the abdomen when you actually get hit in that area. It's just because that's where the nerves are, where the nerves kind of travel. And the perineum is actually a a place between the scrotum and your butthole. That area is mostly muscles to the pelvic floor, and so you can get that pretty bruised and cause a lot of pain. You can also fracture bones underneath in that area as well. Something traumatic happened. Oh no. Oh, glass door. <gasps> oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Frontal head trauma. So that actually hit the top of the head. It's gonna hurt. The concern is always a compressive force down into the neck as well as skull fracture or intracranial bleeding. Those are the initial impact areas that you worry about. From there, skull fracture, probably unlikely. A cervical compression fracture maybe, or even whiplash is more common or more likely to occur. And then landing on either your hip or your outstretched arm, you worry about secondary fractures that could occur just from the fall itself. Doesn't look like she fell and hit the head on the concrete, but it's another thing that you always worry about. On today's episode of how fucked up is fucked up. <laughs> That's up. <laughs> what the heck happened? Over the handlebars. The biggest worry besides where you're landing is actually the bike hitting you right in the abdomen. And so there's something that could get injured pretty badly. Your duodenum, which is the first section of your small intestine, that can get hit and actually you can have a hematoma in that area and cause significant amount of pain. And that's quite dangerous because of the stem of the handlebars can hit right there as you slide off. Hitting the head, shoulders, you can have a clavicle fracture, shoulder dislocation, location, shoulder fracture, and then again, whiplash injury, cervical spine injury. You're probably gonna feel a little stretched out and a little strained muscles and have some pain to that area as well as possible headache. If the pain is out of proportion to what you expect, definitely get checked out at the hospital. Oh, <laughs> that's awful. <laughs> That's just messed up. Now, obviously it's not that much force. It probably did not cause any damage. You probably get a little bit of a bruise or a small hematoma, like a lump on your head. You might have a little bit of a whiplash injury just because you wanna react. So what happens is you pull your head super far back, you contract all the muscles of your neck, which is then gonna cause basically some discomfort of the muscles. It's almost like the worst workout of your life like a day or two later. Unlikely to cause any cervical fractures with that type of whiplash. Oh! Ow! I'm assuming that the rocks are not jagged because the water has smoothed them out, but sliding down like that, you worry about lacerations and injuries to whatever body part is actually sliding on that surface. The way that this individual landed looks okay getting up moving. I'm assuming the legs work, but sprained ankle, dislocated knee, dislocated patella, fracture of the lower extremity somewhere, all things that would be worried about. And then on top of that, any lacerations because you're landing on jagged rocks and you're in this water not sure if it's clean or not, you increase the risk of getting an infection in those wounds. And then definitely gonna get some large hematomas and contusions and ecchymosis to these the areas that have been hit. Oh no. Oh, oh, <laughs> that's the worst. <laughs> Probably the only injury you're gonna have is maybe a little bit of a headache and a contusion or a hematoma, like a little lump there. We'll be fine. It's hitting the temple area. You have your zygomatic arch here, okay? And you have the temporal bone here. The likelihood that it's gonna be fractured from that type of injury, unlikely. You're definitely gonna get some bruising and it's gonna hurt a little bit, but you should be just fine. Has anybody out there ever dropped the weights on themselves? Let me know in the comments. Oh, hang on. Oh, oh man, holy cow. Okay, hang on. Let go. <laughs> 
bark of a tree can definitely cause lacerations. I've actually seen people who've had like bark embedded into their arms and hands from say punching it or scraping on it, having to clean that out and dig out the pieces of like tree and wood, painful as heck. Then you're twisting, you're getting yanked. There's definitely some pulled muscles going on there. You can see like dirt and stuff. Maybe there's an abrasion to the lower extremity jumping into a lake. It might clean it out, but I think you definitely want to use some other water to rinse off any open wounds. You don't want to get infections, any weird amoebas or protozoas or parasites into those wounds. Should be using a, a helmet, having safety gear on. Oh! Ow! Right shoulder and right side of the body just takes a hit there. Could be bad bruising, but at that speed, you do run the risk of dislocation, go posteriorly, or you can just totally fracture the humerus itself, the top part of the shoulder. And then obviously the leg can also get involved. You can dislocate a kneecap, fracture your femur. A lot of different things can happen. When you ride a motorcycle, it's really important that you want to focus on areas of where you want to go. Your body will follow the eyes. So you want to look ahead to the areas that you need to go. Have you guys ever gotten into a motorcycle accident? Let me know. Do you guys ride motorcycles? Let me know as well. Oh! Depending on if the door was open or not, you can actually twist an ankle. You can cause an ankle sprain. You can cause a fracture of that ankle, especially if you fall on it weird. You can also hit your groin on that corner of the wall, and you can cause some bruising and pain right to the pubic symphysis, which is the area where your pubic bones meet in the middle, and there is a joint right there. Also, if you actually get hit right in the butthole, very painful because it's a muscle, and it actually can cause some spasm, and hopefully there's no laceration or cut because then it's going to hurt when you actually have to go to the bathroom and have a bowel movement as well. Oh, okay, all right, slippery fall. Ouch. Oh gosh, you gonna fall again. Oh, what a rough day. Question ends up being a hyperextension injury, pull some ligaments, or just banging on the concrete, which can hurt a lot. Falls onto the left arm. Okay, this is what we call as a foosh type injury, fall on an outstretched arm. You can definitely cause dislocation fracture of the wrist, typically the distal radius and ulna. Sometimes it could be proximal, or you can land right on your olecranon process, which is the big bony part of your elbow and snap that right off. So there's a lot of things that can happen when you're landing hard on concrete. And then obviously landing on the buttocks in the back and right on the pelvic bones doesn't feel good. The iliac crest, I've done that before. Massive bruising, painful as hell. Dangerous, don't do this. You're gonna fall right in, man. Yep. Ooh. Due to the cold temperatures, you can get cold reaction, basically the cold reflex, hyperventilating, not getting enough oxygen in. You can take a big gas and you end up inhaling water. So you gotta be really careful of that, as well as causing something called dry drowning, where you actually get a spasming of the vocal cords to where you can't get any oxygen in. These are things that you have to worry about. And then obviously you're wet, so you have to worry about the after effects of hypothermia. Being in cold water for a short period of time actually has been shown to have some benefits, but not in this situation where you're fully clothed you're in the water, you're kind of scared, you're nervous, and now you have to worry about the after effects, the hypothermia, get those wet clothes off you, get somewhere where you can get warmed up quickly. Oh, get it, get it, get it. Oh my gosh. Burning of hair, those sulfur bonds that are actually in hair cause a nasty smell. There's other reasons why it smells, but that's one of them. And then obviously you're burning your hair. That's so bad. I've actually seen like videos online of people at the barbershop getting their hair like burned. Like that's such a bad idea. Don't do that. Increased risk of inhalation injuries and burns to your skin, but the hair will grow back. There's no permanent damage occurring here. Fire injuries, be careful. You know, you don't want to burn any flesh. You don't want to burn any skin and be left with permanent scars if you can manage not to do that. Be careful out there. Again, these are all things that we do on the daily basis that have just been caught on camera. We've all been there. We've all had these type of injuries. Check out my new supplement company called Life Happens. If you guys enjoyed this video, definitely check out this playlist right here. And as always, make sure you subscribe, turn your bell notifications on and hit that like button for me. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy, my friends.